Hello, my name is Stephen W. Thomas, and today's session is called Getting Started with Logic App Standard. Let's get started with a little bit of about me. I've been an independent consultant for over 20 years now. Along with being independent for 20 years, I've been doing overall consulting work in the integration space for over 23 years. I have been working with BizTalk Server since it first came out in 2001. And I've been working with Azure since the service bus was first released over 12 years ago. I've also spent over six years working with Logic Apps. For the past 18 years, I've been recognized as a Microsoft Most Valuable Professional. If you want to learn more about Logic Apps outside of this session, I will have additional links to resources at stephenwthomas.com slash learn. Here I'll have links to Pluralsight courses that can help get you more information about Logic Apps as well as links to outside resources to help you get started. Feel free to email me anytime with questions at stephen at stephenwthomas.com and make sure you follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Let's get started with a quick agenda of this short session. Here we're gonna first start with consumption-based logic apps so we can have an idea of what consumption is. And then we're gonna spend the rest of our time on standard edition logic apps. We're going to take a look at running these in Azure, as well as running these locally. Let's get started with consumption. Consumption was the first release of Logic Apps that came out over six years ago. It does offer a low cost option because it is truly serverless. There is no hosting that you need to worry about in order to run them. It's a pay per use model. So if you create a Logic App and never run it for a year, you're not charged anything. When you do run the Logic App, you're charged for the consumption of each resource that runs. So your actions and triggers are charged for each one. You can develop your Logic Apps either in the portal, inside of Visual Studio, or using VS Code. These consumption Logic Apps will only run in Azure though, no matter how you build the Logic App. All consumption Logic Apps are stateful, which means your progress through the Logic App is tracked with the inputs and outputs being readily available to review after the Logic App runs. This can be useful in debugging, but can also increase the latency of your process. Consumption-based Logic Apps are always multi-tenant, which means additional clients will be running additional Logic Apps right next to your Logic App. So you could run into the noisy neighbor type scenario. Now there was an isolated environment called the Integration Service Environment or ICE environment that was available, but that has now been retired and being replaced with standard edition Logic Apps. So what are the key differences that make standard edition Logic Apps important? First off, there really isn't a low cost option out of the box. Your low cost option for standard edition is to run them locally. As compared to consumption based where you didn't have to worry about hosting, now we're back to having to worry about hosting with our standard edition Logic Apps. These are generally hosting, hosted inside of an app service plan. You can develop your standard Logic Apps either in the portal or in VS Code. And no matter where you develop your Logic App, they can run anywhere. You can run them locally, you can run them in containers that run locally or even in another cloud provider, or the most common is to run them in Azure in an app service plan. Standard edition Logic Apps can be stateful or stateless. Running a stateless process does have a few limitations, but it can greatly reduce your latency of that workflow. And there is native support inside standard edition for liquid transforms and XSLT maps, as well as for schemas. These features would, co these features would cost extra using integration accounts if you're using consumption logic apps. And standard edition doesn't have the noisy neighbor issue because they run inside of isolated environments inside your app service plan. Let's talk about a few important points. First off, they're not interchangeable. If you build a standard edition logic app, you cannot simply deploy that into consumption and, and then expect it to work. There is configuration changes that will be needed. Enterprise solutions may leverage both. You may have logic apps that only run a few times a month and you want them in consumption, as where you may have logic apps that are more resource intensive, and thus you want to create them as a standard version. Features are not always the same between standard and consumption. A lot of times new features are available first inside of standard, and then that feature is ported over to consumption. 
They do leverage different designers. So the look and feel of building a logic app between the two is going to be a little bit different. And connectors are not always the same. There may be slight differences in authentication methods or different ways connectors present themselves between standard and consumption. We are, Microsoft is making great strides to ensure parity between the two for all of these connectors and features. And unlike consumption, a logic app created in standard is more of like a folder or additional workflows that run inside that. So when you create a logic app in standard, you could have multiple workflows that run inside that logic app and all share schemas and maps and resources that are assigned to that logic app. So let's talk for a moment about connectors for standard edition. There's three types of connectors, two of which we'll talk about here. First off is built-in connectors. These run actually inside the standard edition runtime. So with these, there's no rate restrictions and there's no extra cost outside of your hosting environment to run these connectors. So if you're running these locally, there's no cost at all to execute them. They do also have full VNet access to all resources on that same VNet, which means if you have SQL Server running in your same VNet, you'll be able to access it just like a local resource. The other type of connector is Microsoft Managed Connector, and these run inside Azure, even for workloads that are running locally. These are all metered connections, which means there is a per minute rate limit for each of the connectors. In my experience though, these rates are generally very generous and it's not something you generally, I would generally run into um, as an issue with being metered. These are also pay per execution. Now the pay rate is very slow or very small. There's two types of, there's enterprise and standard connectors, but the pay per execution is there. If you're executing these tens of thousands of times a day, the cost is gonna add up. With all Microsoft managed connectors, there is no VNet support. And something else to note is if you're using a stateless workflow, you cannot have triggers that are based on Microsoft managed connectors. Let's spend just a moment talking about costs. Locally hosted, obviously there's no cost to run the workflow, but there is the cost to make the external calls to your managed connectors. If you're running in an Azure hosted environment, there are additional costs that you need to think about. First off, there's a storage account associated with your app service plan. There's networking charges to upload or download uh, data across the network. There's the cost of the managed connectors like we see in local, but then there's the largest cost is the app service plan. And these can vary on the amount of resources you wanna to dedicate to your environment. And the base cost is around 25 cents per hour. Let's take a look at some getting started demos. What are we gonna cover in the demos? We're first off gonna take a look at the portal where we're gonna create an app service plan and create a standard edition logic app. Then we're gonna dive into things locally. We're gonna create a local logic app, run it locally, and then see how we can deploy this to our app service plan. I've now jumped over to our virtual machine that I'm gonna to use to show us our demos. I've logged into my Microsoft Azure account. And I've just created a blank dashboard with a blank resource group. Let's go ahead and create resources. And what I wanna do here is create a logic app. I'm gonna create my logic app and I'm gonna select my demo resource group. I'm gonna give it a name. And just go ahead and leave the, resource, uh, the region at East US. And here's why I can select my plan type. If I wanted consumption, I can select that here but we're gonna do standard edition. I don't have an existing uh, resource, uh, I don't have an existing app service plan here, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one. If I wanted to rename it, I could select create name, create. If I wanted to rename it, I could select create new and rename it here. I'm gonna leave the name as default, and I'm gonna leave the default pricing plan. I'm gonna leave my zone redundancy as is, which is since this is just a demo. Next, we're gonna to jump to hosting. And this is the storage account of where my files are gonna be stored for this app service plan. I'm gonna leave it again as the default. There's another option to select SQL Server, which is in preview mode. I'm gonna to jump to networking. And here's where I'd have the option to add an existing VNet if I would like. I don't have any virtual networks created here, so I'm gonna simply leave this off for now. But that is a great feature to know that it's available. Under monitoring, it has support for application insight 
But for now, I'm going to select no since I'm just building out this demo. I'm going to go to tags, review and create, and I'm going to go ahead and create this logic app with the app service plan. Now, this whole deployment will take four to five minutes. Okay, now that deployment is complete, I can simply click go to resource and see the resources that it's created. This is a demo, a demo container that is created. This is our top level container in which I can now create workflows under. If I wanted to use schemas and maps, I could upload them here and they would be shared across all the workflows. There's a bunch of other features here that we're not gonna talk about related to this app service plan, but we can see here that they're all set up down here as well as getting plan details. Let's jump into workflows. And I can go ahead and add a workflow here. I'm gonna make it stateful. Just call it stateful 001 and click create. And that'll take just a moment and it'll create that workflow. And I can dive into that workflow and go ahead and open it in the portal designer and get started building the standard edition logic app. I'm now gonna jump from the portal into VS Code and see how we would create a logic app locally and then deploy it into our exact same app service plan that we created here. Okay, I'm now in VS Code. The first thing I wanna point out is that there is some prerequisite. The first thing I wanna point out is there is some prerequisite steps that are needed before you can get started building standard edition logic apps locally. It can be a little tricky and a little complex to set up. And if you already have existing versions of some of these components installed, you could run into additional challenges. But what I've done here is um, the, put out the, not, the top nine steps that I've outlined to get started creating and running standard edition logic apps locally. And there is a very good document in the uh, Microsoft Learn repository about create a standard logic app workflow in single tenant Azure logic apps using Visual Studio Code. And I'll have a link to this along with these steps and the learning resources on my website. But this will give you a little bit of information about what I did before we got here to see uh, how to create these logic apps and run them locally. So we'll go ahead and we're going to get started with creating a logic app and running it locally. I'm going to go to the Azure section of my VS Code. And here under Local Workspaces, I'm going to click Create New. And I need to select a spot where I'm going to deploy this, uh, keep these files at. I'm going to select here, and it's saying, uh, what type of workflow do I want to first create? I'm going to go ahead and create stateful workflow, and what I want to call it, stateful local, and I'm just going to go ahead and open it in the current window. And now this is going to create a set of files over here on the left. Uh, that document on the Microsoft portal uh, walks through what all these different files do and how important they are, but for most most of the stuff we're gonna do, we can just ignore a lot of these projects or these files. One thing I have noticed is if you come over here and you convert it to a NuGet-based logic app project, that does seem to make local debugging a little bit easier to do and I've run into issues if I haven't done this. So I always do that on my projects. And then let's go ahead and build out this logic app. You come over here, you can see my stateful local and I have workflow.json. I can right click and say, open designer, and this will take it just a moment to open the designer locally. I'm gonna say I'll go ahead and use connectors from Azure, and I'm gonna to have to select my region or my resource group. And then here I can go ahead and add a trigger. And I'm gonna add a request trigger here. And you can see here that it does say it's in-app. So it's in-app and it is a trigger. So that means it's gonna run in my logic app process, which is good. I'm going to receive a request. I'm going to set a variable. So I need to initialize. Again, it said it was in app, which is good. My local variable. I'm going to set it to integer, set it to seven. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a response. And again, it says in app, so that's good. You can see that it is an in app response. Like my response, and I want the body to be our variable that we're setting. So I'm going to select body, click the little lightning bolt icon under variables, my local variable, and that's all set. 
I'm going to go ahead and save this. And now one of the good things of running locally is I can actually go ahead and create breakpoints inside of my workflow. This is one of the um, best features of being able to run these logic apps locally. So to do that, I go over to my workflow view and you'd see down here, there is a trigger and I can't actually create the, the breakpoint on my trigger, but currently triggers are not supported for breakpoints. So I'm not gonna do that. It has to be on an action. So I'm gonna do when I initialize my variable and I'm gonna do when I go ahead and send my response back. So I can just jump down to that. Now I can simply run this workflow locally. And to do that, I'm going to first start my local Azure storage emulators. This is part of the prerequisite steps uh, when you set up the environment. And you, they're shown up right down here at the bottom. And to get all three started, I just simply click them. And that's going to get all three of these emulators started. Now to run in debug mode, I simply go over here to run and I'm going to start debugging. Now this whole process to build and get everything ready to run will take a few moments. You will get some pop-ups about some unresolved dependencies and stuff like that. I'll just close out of these. They seem to be related to some uh, SQL components that use newer editions of .NET than what I have installed on here. And I did start with this. I, uh, when I set this up, I started with a brand new Windows 11 Pro uh, virtual machine and went ahead and started with a brand new clean installation. And you can see down here on the left, it says it is, or in the bottom window, it says it is building. So we'll go ahead and give this a moment to uh, get ready for us to debug. Okay, you can see here, we've all popped up into debug mode. You can see our breakpoints over here on the left. I'm gonna go back to the Explorer. And if I right click on my workflows got that JSON, I can go to overview. And this here will show me past executions of this workflow. Um, if I'm not debugging them, I can dive into them and take a look at the data inside them. But it, most importantly, this gives me my callback URL. This is the address I need to call in order to make this work. So I'm gonna grab that. Now I'm gonna jump over to Postman and paste this in here. And I am doing a post. I'm gonna send this. And I'm not getting a response back right away, which is great. I'm gonna jump over here. And that's because I am in my breakpoint. You can see local variables up here. I'm gonna hit continue. I'm going to jump to the next breakpoint, see additional local variables. And again, this isn't a very meaningful example, but if it was a larger workflow with much more going on, you'd be able to dive in here and see exactly what's going on. Um, to give you an idea of, of your luck and feel experience of doing the local uh, debugging. I'm going to go ahead and complete this. It's going to complete the workflow, jump back to Postman. Sure enough, I got our seven back, so that was successful. And that was how simple it was to create a local edition logic app and do some debugging. Now I can come over here to run. I'm going to stop debugging and I'm gonna remove my breakpoints. And let's go ahead and try to run this again without debugging. Again, it's gonna take in a moment, it's deleting all the old files, rebuilding new ones. Okay, that's built and launched back up again for us to run. Let's go ahead and run it again in Postman. And it got our seven back right away this time, so it didn't hit debug. Let's jump back in here. And if we did want to know what happened to this execution, we could go to our overview. And sure enough, you see here is our identifier for this execution. You know, this one took 30 seconds because we hit the breakpoints and stepped through it. This one just executed in one second. And if we want to know information about this, and since this was a stateful workflow, if we wanted to know information about this, we can dive in here and I can click on each of these shapes and get all the information just like I was running a uh, stateful workflow in the portal or running consumption logic apps. So very useful information here. And again, this was all running locally, all executed locally. Now, if I called a connector that was a Microsoft managed connector, of course, you know, there would be that external call uh, to Microsoft and would require the, ex the external internet connection to make that happen. So now that I'm done with this, gonna run, stop debugging. And now let's see what we need to do to get this to deploy to our app service plan that we created in the portal just a few moments ago. I'm going to go back to Azure here and under workspace, I just simply click deploy. And I'm gonna say deploy to Logic App. And here it's gonna list the available app service plans that I can deploy to. I'm gonna do the one we just created, a demo container. I'm say deploy. 
And this process is going to go through and deploy these logic apps into our app service plan that we just created. Now, this publishing task will take uh, several moments, maybe five minutes or so. So we'll uh, be back in just a moment. OK, it looks like that deployment has completed. And then close this window. Let's jump back to our portal. And we can go to our logic app that we created. We'll do a refresh. And here we have our stateful local logic app that we have created locally. And we'll jump into the designer. And sure enough, it's the exact same logic app that we did create locally. Now it's running here in a hosted app service plan. So now that we're done creating our logic apps, I'm kind of done with this uh, demo for the day. We can come back over here and we can go into our um, go into the resource group that we created earlier, and we can simply see the three different resources that have been created. It's our logic app, our storage account, our app service plan. And since we have our logic app locally now, and we can deploy it at any time we want to the portal, we can go ahead and delete this app service plan if we're not, not going to use it anymore. And this will ensure we're not going to be charged for these resources anymore. Simply select them all, say delete. We're going to say delete. And this is a pretty uh, straightforward process here. You can see them execute at the top. And it deletes the uh, first, the logic app storage account first, and then the app service plan. The app service plan takes just a moment longer. And this will clean up all our resources to make sure that we're not being charged for this anymore. OK, and just like that, everything's gone. We're back to everything being exactly like it was when we first started. So this concludes our demo and concludes my session on uh, getting started with standard edition logic apps. Um, as I mentioned before, feel free to reach out to me with any questions. Uh, you can always email, email me, stephen at stephenwthomas.com. Uh, thank you.